Friday. And Electron's three, which is the handout you're going to get at the end of class today, is due a week from today, next Wednesday. We're good. All right, morning, guys. Um, like Mr. Blackford said, I'm going to start by talking about electron absorptions and emissions. And it's going to help you answer number three for your flame test lab. So some of these notes are going to go on your note sheet as well. And we're not going to have time to work on number three right now, but just keep in mind, and I'll go through it a little bit, like how you can use that to help you today. But um, you're going to need to get that done and then turn it in for tomorrow. Oh, it's still frozen. So right now on your um, note sheet, you have just a few lines, and it says energy levels on the side. Um, what we're trying to, or what I'm, what I'm trying to show here, guys, is that these energy levels are energy levels that electrons can occupy. So you could think of the nucleus as being down here at um, at the bottom of our little our chart here, and then each of these lines is an energy level where an electron can exist. So you see the bottom n equals 1, so that's energy level 1. The second line is ener energy level 2, 3, and 4, and you guys get the point. Now, realize that the lines are spaced the way they are on purpose. Like, they are not all equal. So, yes, the further away we get from the, the nucleus or from n equals 1, the higher energy we're getting. But the, the difference in energies up there are going to... Uh, are going to decrease. So the difference between 1 and 2 is greater than the difference between 2 and 3 or 3 and 4. Okay? So on what day did we do the flame test lab? Is that Monday. Monday? Monday we did the flame test lab. So Monday we did the flame test lab and we actually get to see, you know, emissions of electrons basically. So what happens is that we are adding energy to those electrons and then they're giving off a light that we can see, right? That's what I told some people, some of my classes that that's what's happening there. Now, um, if you haven't heard that yet, that, that is essentially what's happening here. So what happens right away is that we have an electron. So that's just E minus, stands for electron, you guys. It's in the very first energy level. And that N equals 1. That N equals 1, you guys, that bottom energy level, it's known as the ground state. Now, I don't have this written on here, but I'm not, it's not going to pop up, but that's the lowest energy that an electron can occupy. So you might want to write that on there, like lowest energy possible, ground state. Now, during our lab, what happens is, is that we, basically, we, we, we gave the electrons energy in the form of, of some type of electromagnetic radiation. So, electrons are going to be hit with electromagnetic radiation. That squiggly line is just, it's just representing one photon of electromagnetic radiation coming in and basically hitting and making contact with our electron. Here. Now that could be any type of electromagnetic radiation, you guys. It could be a gamma ray, it could be an x-ray, it could be blue light, green light, it could be infrared, it, it could be any of those types of electromagnetic radiation. We're not being specific right now. Okay? So any of those types are going to hit this electron. When they hit that electron, what happens? You guys think, what happens to the electron? Huh? It's going to absorb that energy, right? So it's, it absorbs that energy. And it's going to increase in energy when this happens. So you can, you can write a electron at the top and energy level 4 right now. Okay. Now it's in what we call an excited state. So an excited state is just when, we, when we've given energy or when electromagnetic radiation has given energy to that electron. So it's, it's absorbed some energy, now it's in an excited state. Now I told some of the people in my class already that it, it can't stay in that excited state for very long, right? Like, and when I say not very long, guys, we're talking about fractions of fractions of fractions of fractions of fractions of a second, okay? So it's a really, really, really short time that it's going to be in that excited state for. And what happens when it's in that excited state is 
the energy that's gained, it's not just going to disappear, right? It has to go somewhere. So what the electron's going to do is it's going to emit a photon of energy. That energy emission, guys, that's what you're seeing when you see the color that that flame is giving off, right? Like for copper, what color was copper? It was, it was a greenish color. So it's emitting, its electrons are emitting that green color after you've given it energy, okay? That, that's, that's helping you tie this into your lab. So, and it doesn't have to be green light, you guys. It could be given off in any form of electromagnetic radiation, okay? The point is, is that however much radiation it takes in, that's how much it's going to give off here because now it's going to fall all the way back down to the ground state. So this photon here is going to be equal to the energy that it takes in right here. Now, it's a, this is just one example, you guys, going from the ground state to the fourth energy level. Electrons could go from the ground state to the second energy level. They could be excited. They could go from the ground state to the third energy level. Do all electrons, are all electrons going to exist in energy level one, you guys, do you think? No, some of them are in energy level two or three. So they could start out in two, go to four, and come back to two. They could start in three, go to four, come back to three. Does that make sense? Like, they can be at any point on our little on our energy level diagram here. So I just want you to write in arrows for each drop possible here and just write that this obviously is the lowest energy possible in our diagram here and going from two to one is going to be high energy. Three to two is going to be a medium energy is for our chart. Does anybody remember what types of, does anybody remember the types of electromagnetic uh, magnetic radiation that have high energy? What, well, you said it. Yeah, gamma rays are an example of, high, of something with high energy, okay? Um, what else do you know about them? Does it, does it, is that a short wavelength or a long wavelength? Short wavelength. So guys, when you hear high energy, you should be thinking short wavelengths, okay? When you see low energy, you should be thinking long wavelengths. this picture you guys it's showing you what's this is a diagram that's meant to represent this so guys essentially these are the same thing and I'll walk you through the parts here so basically what's happening in this picture you have an electron that's in this is this is a nucleus here right okay you have an electron that's in the first energy level so that's the same thing as over here now what happens is you have some type of electromagnetic radiation. Here we're just we're showing it as a green photon coming in. It hits our electron, right? It sends it to the excited state here. That's the red electrons in an excited state. Now it can't stay there very long. What happens? It emits the same type of radiation, so it emits a green photon and falls back to the ground state. So that's that's what's happening here. So this is a representation of this actual like picture here of what's happening. Okay. Now, your, um, your flame test post lab, it says, summarize the process that produces the colors seen in the flame test. Be sure to include the words energy levels, electrons, energy, wavelength, and electromagnetic spectrum. So you guys should have the necessary tools to be able to complete this now. You should say something about how we are adding energy to electrons causing them to jump up energy levels, right? And then it's giving off that energy in the form of, you know, light in this case, right? Light that you guys are observing. That light has a wavelength and everything that you can see, right? 
Okay, so that's that's where you're headed with that um, with that discussion. I don't really want to I don't want to tell you exactly what to write. There. Okay, but that's some of the stuff that you should have incorporated in number three. Um, your conclusion is just explaining how metallic salts are used in fireworks. So it just says, hint, think about what you saw in the lab and how this relates to fireworks. Okay, I'm not going to do any more with that right now. Now, um, I want to go through a couple examples, you guys, of what you might see on your homework. We're just going to do these out loud together, and then you guys get to practice some of this on uh, the homework that you're going to get later. So this chart is just showing the different, each of these arrows is just showing the different energy level drops that an electron could have, right? So it's just showing that this one here, electron excited to energy level four, fell back to the ground state. This one went up from two to four, and when it dropped back down, it's going to emit a photon, okay? So they're all different amounts of energy here. So the first question on here says, says which photon emitted would be higher energy, A or C? Raise, oh, so what is it? It's A. Well, how do you guys know it's A? It's a further drop, right? It's that simple. It's a further drop. So from four to one is a further drop from four to three. So it's going to emit, it's going to have higher energy, the photon that's being emitted there. Okay. Now we're going to take it a step further with each one. And it, it, guys, maybe these don't make perfect sense at the end of the day. I don't want to spend too much time on this. You're going to get practice with it on your homework too. And we'll go through some of these tomorrow. Um, it says comparing D and B, which one would be green light and which one would be blue light. So what you need to do here is, first you need to figure out B or D, which one has higher energy. <coughs> what? D has higher energy. Now you need to figure out, okay, green, does green light have higher energy or would blue light have higher energy? You look up here, which one's going to have higher energy? Why would you say green? Where's green here? Right here? Where's blue? Right here? So what is it actually? Which one has higher energy, guys? Blue light does. Energy increases as we move this way, from right to left. Energy is increasing here. So which one is going to be B and which one's going to be D, you guys? Yes, D is blue and B is green. So that's what you need to do. You need to figure out always which one's higher energy up here and then which one's higher energy on your electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. The last qu question, it's relating this to frequency now. Now, we didn't talk about this since, what was it, like a, a couple Mondays ago. But we gotta, we're going to bring all this stuff together. So it says, which would have a higher frequency, a photon emitted by C or B? Now, Mr. Blackford has written out the equation up here. And he wrote it like this on purpose. So here he has big wavelength, short frequency. So this is wavelength times frequency equals speed of light, right? He has it big on purpose. So when we have low energy, we have a long wavelength, right, and a low frequency. Over here, when we have high energy, it means we have a very short wavelength, very high frequency. So this one, you're going to have to look at it. You're going to use that knowledge to help you out. So you say, which would have a higher frequency, a photon, emitted by C or B? Huh? I want to know higher frequency. So think about it first. If I go to B, first of all, which one is higher energy? Huh? B is higher energy and C is low energy. Now I look down here. When I have high energy, is my wavelength big or is my frequency big? Huh? Frequency, exactly. So if I have high energy, I also have high frequency. So the answer here is going to be B. If I ask you which had the shortest wavelength, it would also be B. You think short wavelength equals high energy, high frequency. Okay? There's going to be something like that on your sheet. You'll worry about that later. Okay? Now we're going to switch gears. We're going to talk about um, orbital diagrams, electron configurations again, and I'm going to show you by the end of this a shortcut when we're doing orbital diagrams and electron configurations. So a shortcut for those electron configurations so you don't need to write out the whole entire configuration anymore after today.
Okay. So the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to draw out the orbital diagram for chlorine. Chlorine has 17 electrons. Guys, I've drawn it like this on purpose. Like a lot of people, when they did their homework, they went 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, across the page like this. That is wrong. You need to see the different energy levels here. This is one energy level. We put the second energy level underneath it like this. We put the third energy level underneath it like that. If you write them all out in one line on a test or something like that, it's going to be wrong, you guys. You've got to have the separate energy levels here. So fill in your electrons there quick, please. Remember how you fill them in, too. You should put all your up arrows in, in an energy level first or an orbital first, and then the downward arrows. You good? Okay, if you guys have that done already, most people already do, it should look something like this. It should look just like this. So the last electron that you filled in should be this downward facing one right here. Now, new concept that we're introducing you guys to today. This last energy level, these would be the outermost electrons for an atom. Same thing as this right here, these 3s2 and 3, 3p5. So those are, those are the same, right? These outermost electrons are known as the valence electrons. <laughs> Guys, those are the electrons that we care about most in chemistry. Those are the ones that are going to interact with other chemicals, with other elements. Those are the ones that are going to be what moves when we have a chemical reaction. So those are the very most important electrons. So basically, we don't care about these inner electrons as much. So you write the brackets on there, you write those are the inner electrons. We don't care about them as much. Why? Because they're not really doing any interaction here. Only our valence electrons are going to ever interact with other chemicals, with other elements. Count them up once. How many, how many electrons are there in the inner electrons, guys? How many? All of them. You got six here, plus two, plus two. So how many are there? There's 10 there. There's 10 electrons right there. Now, take a look at the periodic table once. Is there any other, I mean, there's an element up there that has 10 electrons, right? And I said, we don't really care about those inner 10 electrons. So what, what element up there has 10 electrons? Neon. Neon. Okay, so when we go and do what's called a noble gas configuration, now this is our shortcut here, guys. We're going to make brackets. The brackets are already made for you. And you're going to put, hold on. You're going to put NE in those brackets. And what this means, guys, this means the same thing as this. This 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 means the same thing as neon in brackets. It's called noble gas configuration because these are the noble gases here. So these will, these will be the only ones, guys, that you ever have in brackets in this case. You'll never have like chlorine in brackets. It's always going to be a noble gas in brackets. Okay. Okay, we're going to talk more about noble gases next chapter. So you put neon in brackets. Now we need to still write out what we consider to be this, this more important part of our configuration here. So you put neon in brackets means this and then we put 3s2, 3p5. All right, so that's noble gas configuration. We're gonna we're gonna um, do a f quite a few more examples with that as we move forward today. But I also want to show you electron shell notation. Electron shell notation is basically taking all the electrons in each energy level, and we're just basically condensing them together. Does that make sense? So here's energy level one, here's energy level two, here's energy level three. Now we look, and we can do this either using an orbital diagram or using electron configuration. And you'll see, you see how it is. So if we look at energy level one, how many electrons are in there, you guys? Huh? 
There's two. You either count right here, one, two, or you look. There's only this one means one energy level, right? It means the first energy level, and there's just two electrons there. So we have two electrons either there or on the orbital diagram, and you write in two electrons, two E minus in the first energy level. The orbital diagrams, guys, make this really easy. That's why I have that line there. Above this line, that's all energy level one. Now you notice there's only one orbital, one sublevel in energy level one, right? And it's the one S here. So we can only have two electrons there ever. So this first energy level, you guys, you'll see it can only ever have two electrons. Now we gotta count up how many electrons we have in the second energy level. Either we look at the, we gotta add all the twos together, so the two S2 plus the two P6, or we look over here and we just count up each electron in the second energy level here. So how many are there? Eight. So then you just put eight on your electron child notation. Same thing, the line helps you out here, you guys. You see everything in the middle here. This is all the second energy level. All right, last, you probably get the point now. You're going to add up everything in that third energy level. How many electrons do you have in that third energy level? Seven, right? You have the 3s2 and the... 3p5, so it's 70 electrons. That goes in the outermost energy level here. Once again, these outermost energy level electrons are called what? The, they're important ones, guys. The most important ones are our valence electrons. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. Guys, I had a typo on this. Nickel actually has 28 electrons. I don't know why I put 29 in there. I just made a mistake on there. So you got to fix it, say 28 there, before we move on to that one. Should be 28 electrons. Okay, so once again, I just want you to complete the orbital diagram. Just want to get a little bit more practice with this, these orbital diagrams. So it shouldn't take too long. Once again on this one, our outermost electrons are going to be our valence electrons. So you can see that there's, only, there's a fourth energy level here, guys, and there's, there's two electrons in it. So these are going to be our valence electrons again. Now, we need to figure out what noble gas we're going to use. Okay, so we're going to look up here. we got to count these inner electrons, but we'll see, guys, the D is not, this D is not going to count, though. Okay, and you'll see why I'm in. The D is not going to count here when we count up the inner electrons. So we're just going to count the S's through the P's here. How many electrons are there? Huh? 18, right? What element has 18 electrons? Argon. So, in our box down here, we're going to write AR. Wait, why does the D count? I'm going to show you. Yep. I'll show you why we're not going to count the D alarm. It's because we're always going to, okay, so when you do this without like writing the whole thing out like that, what you're going to do is, you're going to go up here, you're going to go to nickel, okay? To start your noble gas configuration, you're going to find the noble gas from the row above it, okay? So which is the noble gas from the row above it, you guys? We already said it, but it's argon, right? This is the noble gas from the row above nickel. Now, if we don't count the Ds, argon doesn't have any of those Ds, right? Lauren, do you see what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't have a D level, and I'll show you this more in a little bit, but we, argon doesn't have... 3D in it at all, right? Argon ends at the 3P6 here. That's why we can't count the Ds, because it has to have everything that argon does not have. Okay? It's going to make more sense, guys, as we move forward and do more examples of these. But that's why we don't use it there, okay? So you just, just trust me, hear what I'm saying right now. I'm going to show you guys how to do it in a little bit, okay? So just hear what I'm saying. The Ds don't count. We got to put the Ds on here for argon, okay? or after argon for nickel. So we put argon in 
parentheses here, and then we're going to write everything that nickel has that argon does not have. Right? This means, this right here, it means this. Okay? So then we're going to write 4s2, 3d8, 3, if you want to write 3d8 and then 4s2, does not matter, you guys. Guys, this is all going to make more sense because I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how to do this noble gas configuration without having to write out this or this. Okay, and that's what we're going to do next. But I just, I, I got to introduce it first. Okay. All right, we're going to go do electron shell notation next. In the first energy level, we have how many? So you add up all the ones. How many are in there? Two. And so you can look here above the line or in the electron configuration. There's two. If you look at the second energy level, it has how many? Eight. Now, the third energy level has how many? Nope. What are you forgetting about, guys? You add all the three, so the D's got to get incorporated here, too. So you add eight plus six plus two is 16, right. If you're using the orbital diagram, you got to count all these in this third energy level. Those are all in energy level three. And then in our fourth energy level, we just have two. Now, it's, it's really easy to see when you do this electron shell notation how these are the outermost electrons, right? There's only two of them here. Those are called the valence electrons. Those, once again, are our most important, the ones that we're going to worry about the most as the year moves forward. Okay. I've got to prove something to you, to you guys right now. This is a cheat pyramid, right? The cheat pyramid, you guys, it is the periodic table. This is how we're going to do noble gas configuration without doing electron configuration or orbital diagrams to start. Now, just follow along with me as I do this, you guys. You just are going to tell me what it is. So, first of all, what's the first thing? So, you lo looking at the cheat pyramid to start out with, what's the first thing that you do on the cheat pyramid from starting out? What's the first part of the cheat pyramid, guys? Somebody say it out loud. It's what? 1s2. So guys, say it. 1s2. So 1s2. What comes after 1s2, you guys? 2s2. So 2s2. Right? What comes after s? 2p6. What comes after 2p6? 3s2. Okay? What's after 3s2? We're doing the whole thing, you guys. 3p6. Six. So it would be, guys, 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, 3p4, 3p5, 3p6. What comes after that? 4s2. What's after 4s2 now? Oh, 3d10. How many do you think there are in this middle here? Ten of them. It's not a coincidence, you guys. What's after 3D10? Perfect. What's after 4P6? Okay, 5S2. What comes after 5S2? Shh, guys. 4D10. After that? 5P6. Wow, look at this. 6S2. What's after 6S2? Wow, look at this. 4F14. Now we jump back up. What's after 4F14? 5D10. 5D10. Oh my gosh. 6P6, 7S2, 5F14, and that's basically the end there, but you guys get the point. Oh my gosh. Mines. I never so we're going to, guys, we're going to use this. Oh my we're going to use this to do our, um, our noble gas notations. Okay, so right now I want to do it, flip it over to the back side to your periodic table on the back side. No, not the whole thing. Shh, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we are not going to do all of these. If you want to fill them all in, you can do that. That's fine. I'm just going to put some of them in here for you guys just to have some benchmarks in case you, you know, forget that you can do it like that. So we're just going to fill in the very first one, 1S1. One one. So 
So, I mean, if you look, you guys, hydrogen's last electron would be literally 1s1. Next one we're going to do is 2s2. So